Good morning, dear friends. Today, I'm going to take you along for a day in my life of walking from Canada to Los Angeles along the Pacific Coast. This morning, I awoke in the sand dunes at a county park between the Mad River and Pacific Ocean after a long, dark, late October night. As the first light of the day broke through, I took care of my body and prepared for the day of walking ahead as I awaited for the warmth of the sun to come. I stretched out my body, drank water to hydrate, planned out my route using my printed maps and the computer, and took care of a little bit of work. With a brighter sky, it was time to get out of bed, stretch out the body, brush my teeth, and take my morning poop, returning part of myself to earth. As with any other day of walking, I broke down camp and packed up my walking cart, excited for the 15 miles on the road that lie ahead of me. All of this in silence. So it's 10 o'clock now, which means that it is time for breakfast. Uh, it's been 16 hours since I finished eating yesterday, so I'm completing my intermittent fast. And I'm now speaking. I take the first couple of hours in silence, and it's now time to speak and to eat for the morning. Okay, this is genuinely how I eat on the road. I eat uh, mostly whole foods, pretty nourishing foods, and I make some pretty tasty meals on the roadside. So this is uh, partially the gift from my hosts yesterday in Trinidad. They cooked me up a pot of quinoa for the road as well as some hard boiled eggs. And then I have um, greens that I have foraged, four different greens. There's mustard, radish, plantago, and watercress, and then I have my different herbs and spices and oils um, and a little bit of kimchi that I get at the food co-ops in the area. So, and there's more in there than this. There's probably 10 or 15 whole foods ingredients. So let's give it a try. Oh, I'm excited. After 16 hours of not eating, I like to have my first bite be on an empty stomach. That's my ideal scenario. This is my method of washing my bowl. I have my drinking water and give it a little rinse and then enjoy. No wasted food here. <laughs> so I have 15 miles to walk today. I am just north of Eureka around Arcata, and I'm really excited that I'm not gonna be on the highway at all today. Some days I'm on the highway 101 or one all day, and some days I'm in these more rural country areas. And I am about halfway into the journey. I'm 750 miles in to the 1600 mile trek. It's late October, as you can see, it's fall, and I am elated to be experiencing this transition from summer into fall. And uh, as I keep walking forward, well, I'm walking into winter, I guess. Well, I'm nine miles into the day. It is about one o'clock, which is great because I've often not even left until one o'clock, but I am tired. I'm feeling it and it's time to take care of the body as well as do some chores. So I've arrived at a park where I'm gonna be able to do just that. Sometimes my rest stops are right on the side of the road and sometimes they are in places like this. 
and it's important to take care of my body because without my body, I'm not getting to Los Angeles. And it's also very important for me to take care of my gear. So there's always chores to do. Right now, it's drying out my tent that was pretty soaking wet from the morning fog or dew or what have you. And I pretty much try to utilize every minute that I have on the road. And uh, it's pretty much morning till night. As I said, I am operating for maximum productivity a lot of the times. Walking 15 miles a day is one thing in itself, but I'm also often doing three, four, five hours on the computer. And there's just taking care of the body, eating, buying food, uh, the logistics of figuring out how to get there and the path that I'm going to be taking. If I'm staying with hosts, communicating with them. So there is a lot to do. And so I'm often maximizing my time. And that has meant that I haven't, you know, I've, I've stayed in some of the most incredible state parks and these beautiful places, and I haven't even hiked into the depths of them. And I've instead been on my computer a lot of this time. But here I am on my computer here. And so some would see this as a hypocrisy. Like, who is this guy, you know, on the internet and on the computer? I thought he was a walker. And this is me. I am walking from Canada to Los Angeles, and I'm also on the computer a lot for hundreds of hours. A few weeks back, a woman came up to me and she said, are you on a pilgrimage? And internally, my response was, no, I am just a guy walking from Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi. And at that time, that's what I was doing. I was really struggling for the beginning of this trip. Uh, because I had a lot of time sensitive work and I'm managing a team of people and I was constantly seeking Wi-Fi. Fortunately, that chapter of the journey is over. Being about three months in and halfway into the walk, I've really settled in over the last few weeks and I'm still on my computer a lot, but most of it is not on the internet and most of it is writing and uh, like right today I've been writing the scripts to share videos with all of you because I'm I like to be organized with what I'm sharing with you and so today I am not on Wi-Fi in fact it's been about 24 hours and that's one of the great things about not having a cell phone is that there's long stretches with no Wi-Fi so even if I'm on the computer I'm disconnected from the world I am here in this moment even though it is a moment on the computer but nobody can reach me here I am and I don't even really know exactly where I am. And that's the way it's been for a lot of this walk. Um, where I use the Wi-Fi the most, ideally it's at libraries. I've gone from library to library and I absolutely love doing my work at the libraries. And then I also do my work when I'm staying with hosts. I take rest days a couple days a week, although they're not really rest days, they're more like work days and I use the internet there and then also some at cafes and restaurants but pretty much I'm down to mostly libraries and then the people I'm staying with. Today there's no computer stop however I did do five miles about of my nine miles today with my computer out on my stroller and I was creating the outline of sharing my life in a day so no computer stop today but uh plenty of computer time. My daily swims, or at least three or four times a week, are at the essence of my being. First, they are my very natural personal hygiene. I practice a very simple and natural personal hygiene, and it is one where I'm working with the earth. The sun and the water provide me with the majority of what I need. I don't need all of these different cleaning products, deodorants and shampoos and conditioners and face washes and all of that because I trust in the earth. I trust in what is here. This is also free. It doesn't cost me a penny. I don't have to be buying stuff. I don't have to be dependent upon corporations because I have a relationship with the earth, with the water, with the sky, with the animals that I share my bath with. So this is one of the main ways in which I practice a very simple natural hygiene. And this is also just a way to connect with the earth and it's also a way to take care of the body. 
This is some pretty chilly water and these cold daily baths help with the sore muscles and my muscles are sore pretty often so I try to get into whatever water I can ideally every single day. Oh and uh, I pretty much swim naked wherever I am but I've got a towel on because it makes it a lot easier to do because I can just walk right out take the towel off and I'm swimming naked wherever I go and then also the videos don't get removed from the internet by me being covered up. I have a hard time leaving my friends on the side of the road so I drag them off or pull them off the road and just give them a little bit more of a dignified way of returning to the earth. So that's part of my day on a lot of days. Now, a lot of people know me as a nature guy and they say, why Robin, why are you walking on the highway and not on the Pacific Crest Trail, for example, you know, a great nature trail. And the answer is because I am, this for me is an experiment in humanity. I am, I'm not trying to be away from people right now. I'm trying to be with people, but in a unique way. I'm walking from city to city and town to town and experiencing what it's like to walk into a town having walked there from 800 miles away and getting to interact with people and organically share my, mes my message and my philosophy on life. Ahoy! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Good walking! Oh, thank you! <laughs> this is also an opportunity for people who follow me online and want to meet me to be able to meet me. They know I'm coming through their town or their city and so they can come out and spend time together. And I have met a lot of people, some who have been following me for over a decade and some who just recently started following me. And it's been a joy. Um, just about every day these days someone pulls over who either knew that I was walking this route and you know was like there he is and we got to spend some time together or had no idea and they say is that that guy from the internet or even is that Robin Greenfield and they're often kind of confused because they're thinking what is he doing in this little town in Washington or Oregon I thought he lived in Florida or North Carolina. And so it's a beautiful little experiment in getting to, you know, meet people and connect with people. And I love to connect with people. And this is a beautiful way to be able to do that. The other big reason I'm not on a great trail is because this isn't a vacation. I'm working, I'm working really hard. And this is a way for me to be able to work and to be of service while still being on an adventure, still getting that inner exploration at the same time. And so the road is, you know, it's, it's an incredible blessing to be able to be on this road because it provides me with my basic needs, the ease of transportation, being able to have my material items on a buggy, uh, but also having access to shop food, uh, being able to buy food, to water, to electricity, and to internet. So, I'm remaining very much a part of society while still getting to, in many ways, step outside of society. And this walk is an experiment with that. Now, the noise of the road does get to be really challenging. So I got some noise canceling headphones. And honestly, this is a hit to the ego for you to see me wearing these Bluetooth noise canceling headphones. I feel like uh, this is like, you know, you know, I try to minimize my technology, but I really struggle with the noise of the road and having these makes an incredible difference for me. And also I'm in class as I'm doing this, this trip, I'm in class. I'm listening to books. I don't have a lot of time to read, but I'm listening to a lot of books. So right now I am listening to Ram Dass. I just finished, uh, Robin Wall Kimmerer's Gathering Moss. I had already read Braiding Sweetgrass. 
and I'm diving into a lot of Ram Dass. So I'm in class. So on that note, becoming nobody is on and I'm back to the road. So I might not be on an incredible nature trail, but the Pacific Coast Highway, as far as a road to be walking goes on, it's one of the most beautiful roads that exists on Earth. Being so deeply immersed with the Pacific Ocean and with all these different biomes and regions that I'm walking through, every day I'm interacting with the Earth and with the plants and the animals that we share this home with. I mean, I'm seeing more life here than I see in most of the periods that I've been alive. There is so much life out here and it's so nice to be a part of it every day. Um, each day I'm meeting different plants, I'm walking with different plants, I'm eating them, I'm working with them and met with with them as medicine. I'm smelling them and taking in the smells. The walk also gives me a lot of time to practice what I'm really working on, which is gratitude, just being grateful for everything. Love, just loving everything. Uh, empathy, celebration of life, being in the present moment. A lot of what I really want to be practicing right now is exactly what I'm able to practice on the road as I'm walking. And this whole experience is part of my four year experience of taking a break from sex and romance, sexuality, and instead I'm practicing deepening my relationship with the earth, with plants and animals, and with myself, and also with all of humanity, working to develop a more universal love and a deeper platonic love with with everything and if you haven't looked up what platonic love really means look that up it was it's exactly what I want to be pursuing in my relationships and it would not be a day in my life without foraging this is wild radish See those little tops that almost look like broccoli? It's in the same family. And these are like a spicy broccoli. So I'm, ooh, and these are the little radish pods. Those are wonderful as well. So I'm finding food and medicine growing all over as I do whatever I'm doing. But as I'm walking, I'm covering so much ground, I'm seeing food and medicine growing all over the place. and. In an average day, I might eat a little bit here and there about 10 or so times. Lots of blackberries and apples. Earlier it was some, plant, some plums and some pears. Lots of greens, wild radish, mustard, plantago, watercress, and dandelion. Lots of some different herbs. Um, and then, of course, mushrooms, lobster mushrooms and chanterelles. And... A lot of flowers too, nasturtium being a great one for California. So I do eat three meals a day, mostly from the grocery store, but I'm eating a lot of foraged foods too. I managed to stop in here at the library. It was directly on my route through Eureka. And so here I managed to quickly check some emails and respond to them, check in with the team and see if they needed me for anything and then also fill up my water. I fill up my water at many locations like libraries and public parks and campgrounds and the hosts where I'm staying. Sometimes it's wells and springs and really pure water from the land and other times it's tap water full of chlorine and fluoride and etc. And I'm doing the best that I can. Hectares! Oh my gosh! Just hanging down as a treat. Mmm. Oh yeah, it's October. It's in the late October. And I'm still getting to eat blackberries. I've been eating blackberries since July 28th. I just realized. 
I've been eating blackberries from all over Washington, Oregon, and now Northern California for the last three months straight. And there's something that I wanted to share in this moment. I'm so glad that Brooklyn happened to be here in this moment because I wanted to share every day lately, I just have this bubbling of joy in me. It's this level of, it's almost bliss, which is like too much. Like, it's almost like, why am I so happy? But I would just describe it as this contentment. I feel this incredible contentment with life and not only contentment, excitement. When I was a little kid and I knew I was gonna go out and catch frogs and turtles or go fishing, I just had this uncontainable excitement. And that's how I feel at the age of 38 right now. And it's, it's, so, it's such a joy. Um, so yeah, just feeling this level of contentment and joy and excitement for life. And, um, and of just, I don't know exactly what it is, but I think it's safe to say walking has something to do with it. And I always believed that walking would be a vessel for getting me to slow down, to simplify, to come into the present moment, to get that balance. And uh, I'm really experiencing that. So I'm in Eureka, I've just finished a 15 mile day, but the day is far from done. It's almost five o'clock and I scheduled a little public gathering at a park that's about two miles ahead. So I'm gonna eat a few more blackberries, but interestingly enough, oh, these ones are juicy. <laughs> oh man, that one just melted. Although I am on a walk and I'm pretty free, I am also on a schedule. Although this walk is for me to develop that peace, contentness, and balance, it's also for others in that what we are, we create around us. So. You're welcome. Thanks for stopping to say hello. All right. It's Oh, and if you want to see this video, it'll be on my website, Robin. Robin like the bird, Greenfield like where the birds hang out. Okay, cool. Okay. Thank you. See ya. Hi. <laughs> I uh, just turned down ice cream. <laughs> I can't believe you did that. Well, I ate eight cookies yesterday. <laughs> like eight cookies in like two hours. So I have to put a cap on the sweets for now. I can't get back into my sweet theme. People who know me, know that I have a sweet tooth and uh, one day one day I'm gonna overcome that sweet tooth and today is one of those days well with a 16 mile walk I managed to arrive at exactly five o'clock but there's nobody here but because I'm practicing equanimity that works. All right. These are some radical. Those are my paintings. Oh, really? Yeah. Is this based off of an, a particular redwood? This, this is called Richardson Grove. Are oh, you capturing this? Mm hmm. Okay, well. So there's a dog next door that's pretty loud. So I'm talking quietly so we can see if we can not be interrupted. And there's also a helicopter flying nearby, which seems to have just moved on. So we might be good. So it's the end of the day. The sun has just set and I try to be off the road. Ideally, there it is. That dog is a little bit too loud to end the day with you, so I'm gonna go inside and we'll finish up the day in there together. All right, I found this little nook over here away from the dog. So I'm off the road, ideally a good hour before sunset, but I've gone right up till the end of the night quite a few nights. At the end of the day, I'm setting up in a new place on every day except for my rest days. 
And that could be a campsite. It could be a hiker biker site at one of the state parks. It could be stealth camping, like I woke where I woke up this morning. Uh, it could be a campground, or it could be staying in uh, in someone's house or camping out in the backyard. So now it's six thirty, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time with my host Vanessa. But I'm also going to get in some work. So. Some of you might be wondering, what is he talking about? Like, what's he actually doing on his computer? What work is he doing? So I do a lot of different things, um, but I manage a nonprofit called Regeneration Equity and Justice. And so I work with a team of people. Right now, there's about five or 10 people that I'm communicating with. So communicating with them, helping them have what they need in order to be able to continue on their projects, whether that's Seeds for the People, or the Food Freedom book, or the Be the Change Kids book, or the many different projects that I'm working on to be of service to Earth, to humanity, and to the plants and animals that we share this home with. And then there's lots of other communication with coordinating with people on this walk, with filming. Filming is another big thing. And uh, so a lot of my work goes into that, creating outlines for that. I do a lot of writing as well. And one of my big tasks right now is I am drastically downsizing my life. So I spend a lot of my time closing things out. Right now, I'm working to bring my life really deeply into a level of integrity and truth. And the only way I can do that is by doing a lot less. I've been doing way too much for the last years. And so right now, I spend a lot of my time ending things, closing things, but with integrity. So I'm wrapping a lot of things up in my life and that takes a lot of time as well right now. I'm really glad to have had you along on this day in my life. This was day 87 of the walk and I just completed mile 778, which means I am halfway to Los Angeles, which is 1,550-ish miles, more or less. So it's been a joy to be on this walk with you. Uh, one of my central purposes and goals in life right now is to just be my most authentic and genuine self and i believe that's a great gift that we can offer to the world to just be ourselves and love ourselves just the way we are and i hope that you've experienced that and i want you to know that you help me to be that you help me to be just who i am and being here with you is is a big part of that for me so I've really gotten into the flow as of the last few weeks. At the beginning, I was struggling and I was kind of almost at burnout level a few weeks ago, or I was at burnout level a few weeks ago. But now, as you can see from today, I am flowing and I'm so excited for the walk ahead. And if you watch this and you want to come walk with me, well, you know where to find me. I love you all very much and I will see you again real soon.